Hey everybody. So today I'll be reviewing a calculation for the load on a wall and the center of rigidity based off of the relative rigidities of certain walls. Now, what I'm talking about here is the use of the relative rigidities of lateral force resisting elements, such as shear walls, to calculate the load on a specific element, right? So let's get into the problem statement. The plan picture to the right shows the relative rigidities of concrete shear walls located directly below a six inch concrete roof slab. Given the loading shown, determine the location of the center of rigidity and the load to wall one. All right, a lot there, let's break it down. First off, the problem statement says that a six inch concrete roof slab is present here, right? What does that mean? That means we've got a rigid diaphragm. Now what's the difference between a rigid diaphragm and a flexible diaphragm? Well, a rigid diaphragm is gonna distribute force based off of the relative rigidities of the underlying elements whereas a flexible diaphragm is gonna distribute force based off of the tributary widths. So the problem is asking us to find the loading to a particular wall, which is gonna be based off of their relative rigidities, and we know we can find it based off their relative rigidities because we have a rigid, we have a rigid roof slab, right, or a rigid diaphragm, and also asks us to find the center of rigidity, which is something that is meaningful to us because load is just distributed in that way. So it's essentially asking us to find where this load, the center of where it's actually going to be resisted, right? Well, how do we do that? Well, first off, let's get a coordinate system over here. So I'm calling this, oh, that's wrong. We'll call this X, and we'll call this Y, right? Where our base is at the corner, bottom left corner of this roof plan over here, that's zero, zero. Okay, so what and how do we measure this center of rigidity? Well, the center of rigidity, if you call this distance here, you'll call this distance here y sub r, and you call this distance here x sub r, right? This The center of rigidity is going to be based off of the relative rigidities of the elements that are gonna be running in the perpendicular directions, right? So example would be, for x sub r, the distance to the center of rigidity in the x direction is going to be based off of the rigidities of the elements running in the y directions, right? And it's, it's pretty easy to think about if you picture this load here, this 10 kips, which is acting in the y direction, it's going to be resisted by these walls here, right? Now, how it's resisted by these walls and the center at which it's going to act is going to be based off of which of these walls is going to be more rigid. So where is the primary resistance going to be resulting from? Okay. Similarly, in the y direction, the center of rigidity is determined based off the rigidity of the underlying perpendicular elements. So that would be wall four over here and wall five. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for the center of rigidity in the x direction. So that's actually measured in the same way that you would solve for a centroid of a shape. And that is the summation of the rigidities times their relative distances from some base point divided by the summation of some rigidities. So in our situation, we've got four times zero feet, that's wall one, plus four times 70 feet, that's wall two, plus six times 100 feet, and that's wall three. So we're gonna divide that by four plus four plus six, Right. And x sub r is going to be equal to 62.9 feet, which we're going to say is roughly equal to 63 feet for the purposes of this problem. Okay. Next up, we want to solve for the distance in the y direction. Now, the distance in the y direction, we can use this same problem over, or this same formula over here, but for the walls that are going to be running 
in the x-direction, meaning they'll give us the distance in the y-direction, right? However, one can note that these walls are noted, no, located on the bottom and top edges of this floor plan, meaning on either side of the building. So the center of rigidity, the distance to the center of rigidity in the y direction is really just going to be the midway point, because if you've got some force acting here, it's going to be resisted at the center based off the fact that both of these walls are halfway they're going to be halfway to the center over there. Right? So that's a 40 feet there. So we know y sub r is 40 feet. Okay. So we have got our answers here. We've got x sub r and y sub r. So the center of rigidity is located at... Actually, I shouldn't have erased that one there. I shouldn't have circled that one there. I should have circled this one here. The center of rigidity is located at 63 feet, 40 feet. Okay. Do any of our answers match that? Well, it looks like A does. Okay. Uh, even though we know what the answer is, we're still going to continue and we're going to solve for the load on wall number one. Right. So as I had mentioned earlier, the loading on a particular wall is going to be based off of its rigidity relative to the other rigidities of the wall, or what's given to you there, the relative rigidity. Now, let's find loading on wall one. Okay. So we've really just got a, a load going in the y direction over here, and that's that 10 kips. So we've got 10 kips, and we know that the load to wall one is going to be some fraction of its rigidity or or some fraction of the the overall rigidity of this system right and that would just be its rigidity 4 divided by the total rigidities 4 over 4 plus 4 plus 6 okay and calculating that out comes out to 2.9 kips, which comes out to roughly 3.0 kips. We'll say that for the purposes of this problem. Okay. Now, we see here that A is our solution. Okay. So just to reiterate, the loading on wall 1 is based off of the rigidity or the relative rigidity, I should say, of wall one. And that is the rigidity as it can be compared to the rigidity of the other walls. Okay. Thank you very much for listening, guys. And please let me know if you have any questions.